Hey everybody, it's Scott, doing a Southern Style Triple S Drywall. Got a botched uh, DIY going on right here, so homeowner attempted to uh, do the best he can. As you can see, it didn't come out very well. So what we're gonna do is uh, we'll retape it, because I'm not positive what kind of tape they have on there, if any. Um, so we're gonna remud this, we'll scrape it and or sand it. I think this one we can just kind of scrape the trash off, so to speak, retape and float over it, and then we'll do the texture. Um, so we're gonna cut the video, and then uh, I'm gonna get some plaster made, which I do another video for Plaster of Paris. Set set time seven to ten minutes. Um, it's really good for small repairs, and it's quick and it's smooth. So we'll cut the video and come back with a pan of plaster. All right, everybody, we're back. So as you can see, we got this terrible. Uh, try the patch here so I'm just gonna scrape it it's not really really heavy in the sense of sanding if you sand it you can sand it which will flatten it out before you try to put some mud over it but if you do that take a sponge just a damp sponge and knock the dust off because if you put mud over a dusty surface it'll start to get little pit holes and bubbles so a lot of people have problems with that so I prefer just to scrape it get everything that's you know ugly off of there if you can so your indicator is here so you see how the knife is rocking and you've got daylight on both sides so that's an indicator that we really need to put more mud on it than just what's there so what I'm gonna do is what's called bust it out so we're gonna go both sides right down the middle 12 on each side So I've done another video too on how to float a butt joint. So essentially a patch is a butt joint. So you can refer to that as well. So we'll take that feather edge, just all you're putting is two or three inches of your six on the outside. And lay that edge down all the way around. Like so. So we've got 24 inches of mud give or take 22 or so. And our bad spot is in the center. So that's what we're trying to hide. So I'm gonna take that 12 and lay it right down the center. So what that does is flatten out what we're trying to hide. So you got it nice and smooth across the center of the patch that we're trying to hide. And then same thing on my feather edge. So I'm only have two or three inches of the end of the knife outside. And then I'm just gonna lay that edge down. It's called a rollover. Got a little piece of trash here. Get that guy out of there. And then we'll do it one more time. So the idea is to leave this lap mark outside the center because we're trying to build the mud up on both sides and we're gonna leave that center flat. It's so the same thing on this side. So right now, as you can see, my center is nice and flat. I've got these two lap marks right here, and that's your indicator of where your thickest mud is. So that's where we need the mud on both sides to fill, to give the illusion that it's flat. If you put a level on it, it's not gonna be level, but the illusion is that we're flat. So this is plaster. I have a video on that. You can watch on how to mix it. Seven to 10 minutes, depending on what mud you use with it and how thick you uh, mix it it'll set up and once it sets up I'm going to show you all how to prep it from there all right so we're back this is seven minutes later or so this is hard to the touch so the reason I like plaster and you don't have to use plaster to do a repair you can do it over time as a professional we try to get in and get out so seven minutes later I'm going to do what I call a rake which I do talk about in some of my other videos but you see how this lap mark is kind of thick here so I'm just going to do high side on my knife, almost straight up, and I'm just going to be real cautious, and I'm going to rake it out, because plaster is a molding agent. So I'm able to make it do what I want. Any pit holes, any imperfections, with this heavy texture, it's about to be knocked down, it's not necessary to skim it. So I'm just going to fill everything in like that. And as you can see, everything is flattened out now. 
any pit holes or spot because the mud's a little bit workable if you will now you got to do it before it dries too fast so any heavy edges you want to fix pit holes so now we've got a nice even flat surface and this texture is really really heavy so when we spray it it's going to cover so there's one little spot over here that i neglected to get but another good thing with plaster is it's workable so we'll fix that up and then what i like to do is sponge the edges so it's just a damp car wash sponge and we'll knock those edges down a little bit so it helps with our blend and a lighter texture is definitely necessary this is a heavier texture so a lot of times you can probably get away with not doing this but this is a safeguard for sure just come all the way around with that sponge just kind of stay out your middle but just that edge sponge that edge and now we're ready to texture so we'll uh cut the video one more time and then uh we'll come back with the hopper and we'll show you how to spray and knock it down all right so we're back so as you can see we've got our repair done it's plastered it's laid out it's flat our edges are sponged so now it's a matter of texture this is a heavy texture so we have to spray it with my hopper it's a gold black hopper i've got it on the second biggest hole because if you look up you can see the flat spots after you knock it down are kind of smaller than normal so based on what size the flat spots are on your texture will determine what hole. So I've got it on my big compressor, but you don't need a lot of pressure, but this has a valve. So I'm gonna determine the pressure with the valve. So I'll just go a little bit of pressure, not all the way up, because the, the lower the pressure, the bigger the balls will be, so to speak. As you can see, we tented everything off. It's really important when you do a tent that you get outside you know, roughly two and a half, three feet, because if you have your tape too close, then the overspray will leave a line where the tape is. And we're in someone's living room, as you guys can see real quick. So we want to make sure that we don't make a mess. All right, so here we go. see I've got you know everything spaced out real nice you don't want to get too much if you get too much when you wipe it you're gonna get too many flat spots so this mud is probably a little bit looser than skimming mud it's not as loose as you would do like a light orange peel you want the mud to be a little bit thicker uh, really as thick as you can get it through whatever hopper you're using so again we have to let this set up which is important so you need to let it set up five to ten minutes depending on the thickness of your mud so again we'll we'll cut video and come back when we can knock it down all right so we're back it's been about five or ten minutes so the biggest trick with this is to make sure that uh, you wait long enough for the mud to start to kind of tack up so we've got uh my piece of garage threshold and my other knockdown um, video i told you about this this has been a godsend my buddy eli told me about this rubber is really, really soft, so it makes it a lot easier to not leave lines uh, when you knock it down. So my trusty uh, associate, Blake, who's filming us right now, is gonna take over, and I'm gonna film him, and we're gonna knock this thing down right quick. So real easy, you don't want to put a lot of pressure, and this rubber is really, really soft, so we're putting very little pressure on it what's at all. And as you can see, we're looking pretty good right here. So what we did do was the outside edges. On the outside edges, you'll get a lot of overspray, like smaller stuff. So you can, as you're waiting for the middle, to set up you can knock those edges down so you don't have an edge it's still recording it's okay cool so we're on it sorry about the technical difficulties i think you're good so that's it in a nutshell uh minus uh some cleanup here let this dry put some paint on it like it never happened so here we go again southern style 
please like and subscribe. Uh, we, uh, we're trying to get to 1,000 subscriptions. I'm somewhere around 500 right now. If you guys have anything uh, that y'all want me to do in particular, let us know. Southern style.